Greetings. I want to begin by saying that if you haven't at least completed patch 5.3 of Shadowbringers, then there are a lot of plot spoilers in here, so please consider yourself warned. Since the mysterious scene from the end of Heaven's Ward that shows Elidibus speaking to the Warrior of Darkness, Artbert, I have been fascinated by the idea of visiting the moon. The direction of this scene, the secrecy of the Asians, and the setting left me teeming with questions. What do the Asians have in store for the Warrior of Light and Eorzea at large? What are they planning? What could be on the moon? Now, nearly five years later, it seems like we'll finally head to the moon for some answers. Elidibus was very different, very persistent and patient, even from his very first introduction. When he learns of the deaths of his comrades Lahabrea and Emmet Selk, he only becomes more determined in his resolve to restore Zodiark and re-establish the balance between light and dark. When confronted, Elidibus truly believes himself to be a hero and, just like Emmet Selk, he sees the world in a similar way, that the worlds and the people that inhabit it are fragmented and flawed, and thus he labors to restore the original world. Elidibus claims that the Scions and their people are incapable of understanding the Asians' plight or history, let alone remember them. With their finite lifespans and constant bickering, how could they? Despite extreme melancholy and ever-creeping amnesia, Elidibus is obsessed in carrying out his duty, even if he can no longer remember the reason behind it. Since we only have the teaser trailer for now and not the full trailer, I'd like to talk about what we may find on the moon and what ideas Square Enix could possibly explore on the moon in Endwalker. What did La Habrea, Emmet Selk, Elidibus, and the other Asians have in store for us on the moon? What about some of the other Asians that have been silent and unseen since A Realm Reborn? I wonder what role they will play. Or perhaps Gaius was able to hunt them down. We still don't know the ultimate fates of some of their remaining Asians. What part will Fandaniel play in all of this? Elidibus was careful, but Fandaniel is psychotic and hell-bent on destruction with his lunar Bahamut. I can't help but think of Kefka and a world of ruin type of scenario as the outcome of Eorzea. What's interesting about Fan Daniel is that he is very much a wild card, and there are no unsundered Asians left to keep him in check. Similar to Kefka after turning on Emperor Gestal, he became a god and used his power to destroy the world. What's always been interesting to me is Kefka was a quirky and comical psychotic villain who, in a way, was able to achieve his goal in the end. Could it be that Fandaniel is secretly a puppet master of sorts, toying with Xenos towards some yet unknown goal? This is what I think of when speculating on what could lie in wait on the moon. Of course, I'm just speculating a lot off of very little, and we will know in the future once we have more juicy tidbits and a full trailer closer to the launch of 6.0. I believe Square Enix will decide to go the route of Final Fantasy IV when looking at the moon. This is the Final Fantasy that comes to mind, the one where the moon was a big part of the story. During the course of the game, you eventually physically go to the moon. The lunar whale is the ultimate mount, in 4 and was instrumental to the plot as Kluya used it to travel and to teach humans new technologies. It will be the first 8 player mount in the game and will be available to purchase in the online store to commemorate the Final Fantasy XIV Digital Fan Festival 2021. Could the Lunar Whale get us to the moon? Or perhaps does Garlemald have something to do with space travel? Or maybe they have been doing research and maybe even have a base up there. Whatever the case may be, 
The moon is teeming with strong and resilient monsters. A lot of undead and dragons. There are sprawling lunar ruins. There are subterranean caverns and even a face on the moon in Final Fantasy IV. We meet the Lunarians, also known as the Moon Folk or the Moonfarers. They are very similar to humans, usually depicted with pale skin and white hair. They have an innate talent for magic and are more advanced than the human civilization. In Final Fantasy IV, the Lunarians' planet was eventually destroyed, so they made their way to Earth where humans were still progressing along their evolutionary path. They decided that coexistence was impossible and created the moon to wait for the time to come where one day they could live in peace on Earth with humans. They retreated into the core of the moon and Fusoya guarded over them until the time was right. Fusoya is a very old man in blue and purple robes that reached Earth when humanity was still in its evolution. His true age is not known, but he may very well be one of the oldest characters in the entire Final Fantasy series. Although most Lunarians were content to sleep until the human civilization was advanced enough to, to exist with them, there was one who thought to destroy humanity and take Earth for the Lunarians. The Tower of Babel is a monolithic tower that emerges from the depths of the Earth to the overworld. It is gigantic in scope, very similar to the Crystal Tower, and can be summoned by massive amounts of crystals from the Earth and the Moon to summon the Giant of Babel. The Giant of Babel is a type of machine that has several different areas and acts as a dungeon. It was created by a branch of Lunarians that wanted to destroy humanity to take over the planet. The heroes can infiltrate it and destroy its CPU. We may see some form of this in the future. Perhaps it lies in wait, buried somewhere deep, waiting to be activated. Then there was Zemus, a force of pure evil. Zemus considers the Lunarians to be superior to the humans and wants to destroy mankind so he can create a utopia on Earth. His will was so strong that it lives on in a force of pure hatred. It is likely we may see a Final Fantasy IV themed atmosphere surrounding parts of 6.0, and I think it would be a neat touch to the moon. One other possibility is that if Van Daniel gets his way and somehow creates a lunar cry type of scenario, we have, we have seen mysterious towers pop up around Eorzea, and they obviously serve some sinister purpose. The Lunar Cry in Final Fantasy VIII is a phenomenon where monsters from the moon fall down to Earth. Gravity magic could play a role to bring the moon closer so monsters can enter. They cluster together in a gigantic spot that looks like an eye, acting abnormally and changing other creatures into raging beasts and fall on the planet. We see this in the trailer with Alice and Alphino and the Warrior of Light fighting a giant monster near the ruins of Nim. We also see monsters on the world map as the final days are described. Square Enix have done a wonderful job with this game to bring together fans both old and new. It would also be very interesting to see a fresh new perspective as the lore of 14 is rich and beautiful and it stands on its own as a masterpiece, not needing to borrow from other titles. I'm glad that the new Sage Shop has its own type of weapon unique to 14 and I want to see more things like this in the future. I'm also curious what role, if any, the worshippers of Menfina, the lover, or the keeper of the twin moons will play. Whatever the case may be, there is something definitely on the moon and it will play a pivotal role in our story. 
Old cutscene data from the end of Heaven's Ward suggests a strange formation on the ground that may resemble Zodiac's glyph from Final Fantasy XII. And there is a strange rock formation in the corner of the cutscene when Elidibus speaks to the Warrior of Darkness. We still don't know much directly about Zodiac, but it is strongly implied that it's been sealed away somewhere on the moon. Only time will tell. Thank you so much for watching.